the Center for Biomolecular Science and Engineering was started in the mid-1980s. The Naval Research Laboratory is one of the first uh, DOD laboratories to, es to be established. And uh, in the 1980s, the idea of using multidisciplinary research as a way to develop new materials and new concepts was new. And NRL was one of the first ones to start the Center for Biomolecular Science and Engineering. Currently, we are involved in several programs that seek to integrate biomaterials with nanomaterials. Bio-nano hybrids are nanomaterials which have components of both classes of materials. For example, a semiconductor quantum dot, a gold nanoparticle, a carbon nanotube or carbon uh, fullerene. And they'll also be functionally integrated or display biological components such as DNA or enzymes. They're an amalgam or a functional composite of the two. And what we're interested in is how they're able to work in sync and do much more or exploit properties of each for uh, value-added applications. We try to develop a fundamental understanding of, of how nanoparticles can be interfaced with cells controllably so that nanoparticles can be moved from being used as a mere label of a cell to now being able to be used to control cellular function. We have a project right now that's looking at understanding how to target specifically a nanoparticle that's introduced into a cell and have that nanoparticle target a specific protein. And so the way we do that experiment is we have cells expressing a protein of interest and then we physically microinject the nanoparticles, in this case they're semiconductor nanocrystals or quantum dots, and we can actually visualize in real time the assembly process of the nanoparticle to the targeted protein. If we want to sense something in the environment, um, instead of building a, an extremely expensive, extremely specific, extremely sensitive single sensor, we'd like to ask the question, how many small, inexpensive, moderate performing sensors can we actually build and how does that concept of distributed sensing work instead of centralized sensing with a single uh, point sensor. Electrochemistry has an advantage in that it can be miniaturized, it's inexpensive and requires low power and we've designed a system that can um, be attached to a drone, um, sample um, soil and then also detect the presence of explosives. We have essentially developed a color metric sensor um, that's based on porphyrin chemistry and built it into a uh, portable unit. And the goal of this sensor is that it produces color changes when it's exposed to uh, small molecule chemical threats or biological threats. Um, it runs autonomously for two weeks by itself and can be used for uh, early warning uh, detection systems and for distributed sensing. I spent a fair amount of my time thinking about how to understand and exploit an ubiquitous marine bacterium known as Vibrio harvii to get, thing, to get it to do things that it doesn't naturally do. And the reason that we're interested in this organism is because it's a model system for bacterial quorum sensing, which is cell-to-cell -cell communication. One community that's a particular interest to the Navy is that of biofouling communities that form on the hulls of Navy vessels. And biofouling on Navy vessels causes an increased drag local coefficient and fuel consumption costs. So what we're interested in is trying to determine what organisms are actually responsible for biofouling, what they're doing when they're forming these biofouling communities, and how we can actually retard the growth of these communities. I'm sitting here on top of our benthic mesocosm, which uh, contains uh, marine sediment and seawater, and it allows me to replicate properties of the marine environment that we study. What the important aspects of how this device works is that it's a fuel cell. And what happens is, is that the electrodes become colonized by microorganisms that are in the marine environment. So in the marine sediment here, there are a lot of microorganisms just as there are in the overlying water. And they uh, spontaneously colonize the electrodes and they actually ca uh, catalyze the electrode reactions. And they continuously generate electricity, uh, drawing energy from the marine environment using these microbial catalysts without any indication of depletion at all. We know that bacteria naturally do this in the environment and we want to know how we can understand that to create new materials such as biofuels. If we can understand how bacteria eat electricity, 
we can manipulate those pathways using synthetic biology so that we may not only create biofuels, but someday we might be able to cr create microbially produced bioelectronic materials that could be used to repair things like autonomous underwater vehicles. I have two projects that seek to utilize bacteria to make novel materials and reagents. The first project focuses on using bacteria to produce cellulose to serve as a solid substrate for the development of wearable electronic devices. The second project utilizes uh, bacteria to produce uh, reagents for use in environmental remediation and cleaning up of chemical warfare agents and uh, contaminated waterways. For that, we package enzymes into uh, bacterial bacterially produced proteoliposomes uh, that can then be harvested and used for cell-free catalysis. What makes the center unique is the interdisciplinary nature of the science we do here. With that comes a high degree of flexibility and the ability to pursue projects as you get a new idea and get people just to come together to explore is it even possible and start generating some preliminary data to see if it's something that's worth pursuing. The nature of the multidisciplinary research done at the center is very unique in the sense that biologists, chemists, and uh, uh, physicists all work together in the same building, and as a result, innovation occurs. 